Hey, my name's Matt, I'm building a sop with camel. Uh, I've been inspired by quite a few other videos on YouTube, so I thought, what the hell, I'll give it a go myself. So through this, I'll start documenting the process I go through, through making parts, uh, and hopefully over time, we'll start seeing a sop with camel being, being built. Uh, be warned, this is a slow process, it's a hobby project, I only get a few hours a week to work on it, and quite frankly, I'm not in a rush. It takes what time it takes. Uh, for me, it's more about the journey as opposed to the destination. If I wanted to stop with camel tomorrow, I'd buy a kit set. I'm not. Instead, I bought a stack of timber. And believe it or not, it's a stack of timber left over after a year's worth of cutting in order to create other timber. And if this garage looks a bit cramped and busy, uh, you're absolutely right, but it's substantially bigger than the garage I had about a month ago. <laughs> so I'm actually feeling quite luxurious in the amount of space I've got. Um, so yeah, so that's a bit about me, uh, a bit about the project. Um, wish me luck. Cheers. Kia ora. I'm going to talk a little bit about my sop with camel, and in particular making ribs for it. Um, what we're looking at here is a rib template for a centre rib for the main spar, main wing of a sop with camel. So I'll give you a little bit of background behind it and then we'll come back to what I'm actually doing with it. So what I've got over here is a rather large stack of timber. It's about a third of the size it used to be. Um, and walking through the garage out of the direct sunlight, there we go, it's a little bit better. And a whole bunch of Cut timber size ready for further processing. Once I'm ready, once I get rid of all this stuff and cut it down. But what I'm more interested in at the moment, and move around, move around, is these are front web ribs. So, oh, spinning around. So that's the front of the uh, rib for a sop with camel. Got about 19 bait at the moment, I need 90. So I need a few more. Uh, and in the process of making these, I learned quite a bit about how to make templates. So spinning around a bit, just moving through. This garage is very tight for space. Yeah, I haven't really prepared this in advance, but that's okay. Right, reaching through. It's on the bench. Just a bench. So, what you see here, this part is the template that I made originally, and I'm now making the second template for the, for the part that goes to the back, uh, center of the rib. I made this first, uh, you can see numbers written on it. Uh, they're all numbers are made for critical dimensions to make sure it actually uh, met spec, my spec. The holes you can see there, oh, before I get onto that, this is the tray for it, and the idea is you put the ply on top, ply on top, and then router around it in order to get the shape right, which is what we've got up here. Got on those again. Oops. I am quite sure that my camera work is completely wonky, but that's okay. In part, this is me having a go at actually trying to do a YouTube video. So, there we go. So I did the outside edge first. And I'll talk a little bit about how I made this template. Because the next one will be something similar. So I made the template first by creating this part. Once I made that, then I got another piece of custom board. This is made out of custom board, by the way. Another piece of custom board for a base. And then built up around the edges, just using cast-offs. Glued those on. Uh, let those set. And then I got my router. And I placed a piece of ply on top, lowered the router to touch the base, then removed that, and then when I put the router on top of here, it actually goes into the base by the depth of the ply. Then you can router out the space you need in order to fit your template in. As part of that as well, you can see the screw holes in the base there. I screwed 
this in onto the base to keep that still, uh, which meant I could do all measurements and make sure I had enough space around it. And when it came to actual ply, this part, I put screws through the back, so they're protruding slightly on here. Oops. Get the ply, press the ply on top, and that would then give me indentations on here, which I could then use for drilling through and enabling me to screw from the top back down. Uh, the screws needed to be rebated. Picture cross using one of these. I countersunk those in, and that way there's no screw tops on top of the ply. So when I came in here, this piece without the hole already cut in it, there was all one piece at that stage. I uh, had the screws in here, screws were uh, countersunk, and this here is now a flat surface. Now I can get my uh, router and route all the way around the edge and create the template. I'll create the shape rather. So that was the first stage. The second stage involved then cutting out the hole in the middle, and this is called a lightning hole. Uh, the goal of that is to retain the strength of the plywood, but cut out all the excess weight in order to keep the aeroplane lighter. And that was the goal of this piece. So you can see here, got a hole cut all the way through. Bring that back down again. Yeah, I'll orient that to the same direction as the already got. Cool, so I cut the hole all the way through. I measured out that, measured out that, joined the two together using scroll saw, uh, and then sanded it to get the right uh, depth. And in particular, I needed a quarter inch between that facing and the edge here, and that facing and the edge. And once I felt I had that, I could then put the entire sheet in without the hole at this stage. I could drill a hole in here, and I drilled it between the two screw holes because I didn't care about the timber around that point. Uh, just big enough to get the router through, and then the router can then just go all the way around the inside. And job done. And because this is countersunk, I'll show you that again, countersunk again, and you get that by placing the router on top of the ply, the bottom of the router bit on the surface of the of your board, which then gives you the correct depth. Remove that, then router on here to router away this material. I had pencil marks, I think they're still here, yep, a couple there. I had pencil marks around the edges, and those pencil marks are the bits I didn't want to route away. And the goal there, there's my finger, there we go. The goal there is so that I had locking points for my ply. Which meant I could pop this in, and it would stay in place. But I didn't have to worry about locking points all the way through here, so I didn't have to worry about the measurements there. As long as I had one, two, three per side, a uh, couple at the back, probably do a less, but that's what I just what I chose, um, and we're good to go. One of the interesting parts I found is after I'd routed a couple out, I found this actually got loose in here. So what I ended up doing is getting a piece of spring steel. That's a piece off a wiper blade, left over from. Um, uh, an excise cradle lockpick. It's just the right size to fit in the back and shim this out. Get that right. It's not going to cooperate. Quite hard doing things one handed. Pull it out for the moment. And what I found after doing that is I had to go back to the first view that I'd done. The reason for it, I think, is that uh, it knocked down all the high points on these lugs and then created enabled this to start moving around. And you can see there's a bit of movement there. Um, and I then had to go back through the first ones and reroute them just to make sure that they, they all matched. But yeah, so that was the first one. So now I've got these two sorted out uh, and created 19 of these out of the 90 I need. Uh, I'm now working on the back part which comes off here. The spar will fit in the middle and I'll show you a picture in a minute of the plan and the next one's to do the center section. So with that I'll go find the plan and uh, I'll show you what the plan is. So these are replica craft plans by Jim Kiger and what you're looking at here is the main plane, the rib for the main plane. So I've already made that part there and the templates for it. So currently I'm working on this section. You can see it's got markings at every two inches. 
Uh, everything's in Imperial, which is kind of tricky for somebody used to metric, but I'm getting used to the different me measuring systems. Uh, so marking every two inches and the top number and the bot bottom number relate respectively to the bottom chord, height of that, and the height of the top chord. And I've converted all those to millimetres uh, and used my caliper to double check on that, but I'll show you that in a second. So I'm currently making the template for that. I'll make a few of those and then I've got to make the template for the tail portion. And once I've got those, then I'll finish off making all the ribs, rib webbers I need and then I can start making ribs. It's a bit of a process. So I'll go show you uh, one I made earlier and we can talk about the differences between that one and what I've learned since uh, and what I'm working on at the moment. So we're looking at version 1 and version 2, which isn't complete yet, but I'm with some progress. So the version 1 I made after examining the plans, uh, creating a uh, rib on uh, 2D uh, designer software. And the original intention was to create uh, files so I can get these laser cut. As it turns out, getting things laser cut is fairly expensive, and this is a hobby. So I figured I'd rather than spend the money on laser cutting, I'd spend it on better tools. Uh, and just do it manually. So the bottom one, just turn this up a little bit, you can see this top edge here, that's Builders Bog, and that happened because I end up being a bit enthusiastic around trimming this, and then had to fill it out in order to get to the right dimensions. Uh, and that's all the way across the top. So I was desperately hoping to avoid having to do that, okay on the bottom, avoid having to do that on my Mark II. Turn to Mark 2. The scene's looking pretty good, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. And I'm slightly enthusiastic on this side. Uh, it's all a bit of a learning curve. You can take material away, but it's much harder to put it back on again. And ideally, you don't want to be using things like Builders Bog to flesh it out. Um, but it is what it is. So, markings on here. What I've done on this occasion is I've, I've used this baseline here as my uh, marking plane, so that's my point of reference for this top line. So on here, if I zoom a little bit, you can see this one's uh, 3 and 7 six, sixteenths high, 3 inches 7 sixteenths high, uh, which equates to 87.31 mil. And what I've been doing is going through and making sure that the dimension from there to there, zoom out a little bit, uh, is 87.31 millimeters all the way along. 87.71, 87.71, 87.31, 86.92 and so on and so forth all the way to the end. Now once I've got this top edge correct, which I have now, I can then carve away this bottom edge and follow the curve of the rib, it's concave. And in the centre here I've got the distance between the top edge, which is now my reference point, and this bottom edge. So 247 64ths of an inch, uh, which is 69.45 millimetres. And that's what that distance here represents. Uh, the main difference I'll do this time is I'll give a little bit more generosity when I cut to that line. Uh, maybe up by a millimetre or half a mil, if I can get it that accurate. Uh, sanding it's going to be a bit of a sod because I can't put it on the belt sander easily uh, because it's a concave surface. So it's going to take a little while to get this actually down to size. The other thing I've learned from doing this exercise is when I made this up, these ends are straight up and down. They're parallel with these lines here. And if I put this on here, oops, this is actually curved out, whereas this is straight up and down. Now the reason this is curved out is the spars are actually on a lean by two and a half degrees. And that's not replicated on my very first attempt. So I'm really glad I had that attempt, uh, recognised the problem, and didn't start cutting up plywood before I had this go. Uh, in fact, I didn't spot that problem until I mocked everything up in, in CAD. And then I spotted I actually was meant to have a two and a half degree. Up until that point, I thought it was just a mistake. Uh, but it's obviously dangerous to assume that sort of stuff. Uh, so I next also need to sand these, these parts down to the line as well and then double check those dimensions. So that's the current plan, is over the next few days, 
use a scroll saw to cut out this bottom line, sand it up to that line there, and that will then give me uh, my template for creating the outer edges of the center rib. And the next stage after that is then to create the lightning holes, template to create the lightning holes to go in the center. Cool, hopefully that's clear as mud. And so it's a process, but hey, building an aircraft's a process. Let me introduce you to my Sopwith Camel. Somewhere in the stack of timber, there's a Sopwith Camel ready to be carved out. Uh, it's a little bit like having a 